What made the weird kid at your school weird? In hindsight, she wasn't so weird. She just marched to the beat of her own drum. She was very overweight and had a lot of health issues, including more than one skin condition. So people saw her as gross and they avoided her. I can remember all the way back in first or second grade when we did dancing in gym class. No one wanted to be her partner because her hands were covered in scaly rashes. But she was smart and she had an odd sense of humor and despite how everyone treated her, she was confident in herself and never hid any part of her personality. She was always the first to speak up in class and she challenged other people's opinions so readily. But at the same time, she was constantly falling asleep in class and she snored so loudly. I remember she sat behind me during our AP exam for American history and for the life of me I could not focus on my test because she was breathing so loud. She was incessantly bullied to the point of being pity voted onto prom court. She had one real friend. And then a year after we graduated, she passed away completely unexpectedly. I remember waking up to go to work one morning and my best friend had texted me that she was gone. I was absolutely shocked. Apparently, she had been out to dinner with her aunt and on her way back to the table from the bathroom, she collapsed and they couldn't resuscitate her. They did an autopsy and couldn't confirm the cause of her passing. Her mother died about a week after she did and they had a joint funeral. Probably the saddest funeral I've been to. The worst part about her death was that it lived in a really small town, so it's all anyone was talking about for weeks. Her biggest bullies were some of the loudest voices. Some people from her graduating class held a memorial service for her where they sent off paper lanterns, but I couldn't get myself to go because it was full of all the people who made high school miserable for her. I couldn't bear to listen to them talk about how great she was, how beautiful she was, when they never held those sentiments when she was alive. Story 2. I had a few. One was obsessed with all Asian culture. Kind of random since we lived in a very rural community in Canada, with little connection to the outside world, let alone to Asia, and would lose her mind if anyone said anything remotely negative about it. It started out as mainly just a fixation on Pokemon, anime, and K-pop, but quickly branched out to all things Asian. She once hit me with a textbook because we were discussing M. Butterfly in class and I said that I didn't like it. This was at age 16. Another kid used to pick his nose until it bled and then go home because he had a nosebleed. He would also eat the boogers. We were all surprisingly chill about that part of his personality. The thing we all hated most about this kid is that he would lie about the most random stuff. Like he would deny that he got hit when playing dodgeball or caught when playing tag in the playground. One time my neighbor made a little inuk shook glued to a piece of driftwood and I brought it to school to show the class. This kid picked it up in front of everyone, immediately dropped and broke it and then denied that it was him that broke it, even though we had all literally watched him do it. He cried when we continuously called him out on it. This was also at age 16. That the lying kid one time broke his arm and came to school in a sling. The next day the sling was on the opposite arm. Even the teacher called him out on that one. After you defeat all the weeaboos, you read classmate as the final boss. Story 3. There was a kid in my high school who never talked. It wasn't that he couldn't speak or that he only spoke to his close friends. He just wouldn't speak to anyone. Teachers didn't call on him because they knew he didn't talk. When a substitute would come in and try to call on him, there was always some kid who would have to explain Ricky doesn't talk. If you asked him a question, he would just look at you. It was weird and some people would take offense to his silence. But eventually everyone realized it was just his thing and rolled with it. The only time he spoke was when we had to present individually in class. On those days, people would get really excited if they had a class with him because hearing him talk was like seeing a unicorn. A lot of people have mentioned this possibly being a case of selective mutism. I looked up the diagnosis and it seems like a good match. There were also rumors from kids who rode the bus with him who said that once he got off the bus, he would meet up with his neighbor friends and presumably talk to them. When he did a presentation in class, he didn't have a weird voice or any strange vocal qualities. A lot of people have asked me if they knew Ricky. I would tell you that I went to school in Kentucky and I graduated in 2013. If I give any more information publicly, I would feel like I'm violating his privacy and that's not cool. Story 4 Gosh, where do I begin? He was weird, but more creepy. He wore a kilt to school, rumors say with no underwear, on multiple occasions. He talked about how attractive his sister was to the point where a lot of us wondered why he moved to Minnesota from, you guessed it, Alabama, in the middle of the school year without a sister or dad. He brought his mom's adult toys to school to try and sell them. He ended up getting expelled for that, but a lot of people say it was because of the amount of girls who came forward and said he was following them home. I texted my friend who had a lot of classes with him and she told me some more things about this kid. He did nasty stuff, aka have fun with himself in class, during class, while they were watching a World War II documentary. He got suspended for this. He would hide under the bleachers during assemblies and play the kazoo during the national anthem. Rumor has it he would also pinch people's b male or female. Story 5. So this is Kit. Kit was that kid that ran to each class with a rolling backpack in tow. He was small, had glasses, and your cliche general high school target. I'm not sure if he ran between classes because he got bullied or what, but he must have. 
He got to the point where he was basically on the defense all the time. I'd even tried to be friends with him at one point just because he sat by me and he just snapped back at me. He wanted no part. I honestly think he had trust issues, and I don't blame him. Because he would react, it kind of made him more of a target. I had seen him multiple times where someone stepped in front of him or heckled him as he rushed along, kicked over the backpack, etc. It actually just sucked to see. He would stand up or say stop it and it would just continue, and he almost seemed embarrassed that you did something about it for him. So anyway, senior year. We have a speech going to be made by the valedictorian and then the school votes on someone to make a speech. Someone started telling people to vote for Kit. as some messed up joke. Kit won. I specifically remember my English teacher sitting us down and talking to the entire class. I think probably all the teachers went as a unified force in defense of him. They told us Kit had a lot to deal with the last few years and the people of the school voted for him basically as a cruel joke. But this could really be a defining moment for his high school career and just begged us to let him have it. I think most of the people in the school weren't bullies, but all it would take is one person to ruin it. The day of graduation, Kit made a great speech. It was almost 15 years ago, so I'm sorry to say I don't remember what he said. But the entire class, like 1,200 students, actually listened. At the end, we all cheered. Like crazy cheered with standing applause. You could tell it was a good day for Kit. He was so happy and maybe even relieved. Here's a kid who had been bullied for years and is being cheered and supported by a crowd of 1,200 plus of his peers. No one should have gone through the bullying, and I'm sure he went up there with a lot of anxiety, but he certainly left the stage with a huge smile on his face. I'll never forget the kid's face. It was just <laughs> so happy. I'll never forget it. It was very touching, and like I said, I don't think I remember what he said because I remember being nervous someone was going to mess this up for him. I think someone yelled, Yeah, kid! when he got up there, but that's it. Whether it was in a mocking way, I'll never know, but no one responded or fed into it if it was. Also, those who don't want to believe the story... I'm sorry. I get that. Why would someone go on the internet and tell lies? But it was something that happened. For those asking if this was their high school, you'd know because we had the honor of being the first class to graduate in the stadium. And it started raining as we were walking to the stadium for graduation. They decided not to cancel, hoping the rain would hold out. The stadium had no roof. If this sounds familiar, then yes, it was probably your high school. The entire time reading this, I was expecting some terrible ending. Like some clown ruining the whole thing. Super relieved to hear it had a good ending. Story 6. She wore long, multicolored, mismatched socks pulled up to her knees. She didn't so much as sit in chairs as she perched in them, knees to chest kind of thing. She dressed and looked like a boy at an all-girls school. She had that, I don't give an F what you think of me. Here, let me prove it by doing something really strange kind of attitude. Loud, kind of crazy, and ashamedly loved anime and metal music. Did the whole goth thing as best one could with a school uniform. Frequently reminded everyone at a Catholic school that she was atheist and proud of it. This caused several fights between her and the theology teachers. Weird as hell and one of my best friends. I think I'm seeing her on Sunday? After reading this, I remembered high school and holy hell, that was pretty rough for a lot of kids I knew. They turned out pretty successful. Actually, even more successful than the bullies. If anyone tells you you're weird because you're different, they're wrong. Do what you want, wear what you want, love yourself and everything follows. Like you hitting the like button, subscribing to my channel. Story 7. As it happened, my first elementary school had not one, but three weird kids. Their names were Hannah, Justin, and Anthony. And although they were strange in different ways, each of them seemed to be in constant competition to see who could provoke the most revulsion from their peers. Hannah was a dark-haired girl with a perpetual glower on her face and a sullen, stubborn demeanor. She had a reputation for being somewhat antisocial, and probably could have been mistaken for a crotchety old woman if she hadn't been in first grade. Hannah's claim to repugnant fame stemmed from the fact that every so often she'd wander around the playground and search for a discarded food, which she'd eat right off the ground. It didn't matter if the fair had been thoroughly stomped on and it wasn't the result of any malnutrition either. In fact, there were days when Hannah actually forewent consuming her own lunch in favor of seeking out others' leftovers. Justin was a more amiable fellow, but his particular form of foulness was also much more extreme. For no reason other than to amuse himself, Justin would do anything he could to disgust people. From jamming things up his nose to sticking his head in the toilet. To make matters worse, it seemed that most of the time, Justin didn't understand what he was doing at first. There was one occasion, for instance, that he tried cleaning his dirty fingernails with his teeth. And when this was pointed out as being repulsive, he laughed aloud and made a big show of eating, and apparently enjoying, his own fingernail gunk. Anthony, however, was the worst of all. If you've seen the television show Louie, then I want you to picture the boy named Never. Everything about him, from his appearance to his attitude, is nigh on identical to how Anthony was. If you haven't seen the show, though, try to imagine a fat child with absolutely no shame, an expression of oddly disquieting innocence, and a tendency to cause gag-inducing circumstances without so much as batting an eye. 
Anthony's worst ever offense occurred one terrible afternoon as her class was watching a movie, and he was seen reaching beneath his chair, chipping off dried boogers, and then openly eating them. When told that his behavior was revolting, Anthony replied, No, it's okay. I put them there. Floor food, awful antics, booger buffet. Story 8. I was the weird kid. In 4th and 5th grade, I was so obsessed with cats. I'd wear ears and a tail to school and pretend to be a cat all day. I grew out of that eventually, but I never lived down the cat girl stigma. I remember we played this dating game in the gym for some reason. The girls were hiding behind a curtain and the boys would ask us questions. I got asked what my favorite animal was, and I legit froze and couldn't think of anything. All I could think was, don't say anything cat-related. So I said, lion, like an idiot. The boy on the other end was like, Ew, that's Fiorana. Don't pick her. That was pretty mortifying. Then I traded one obsession for the next and became freaking crazy obsessed with Final Fantasy. I never really grew out of that one. Then I was that weird girl that likes anime too much because the jocks couldn't tell the difference between video games and a cartoon. <sighs> High school was not fun for me. Sometimes I wonder if I might be on the spectrum. Funny how that was considered weird before, but now it's the common trend. Story 9 I know that this sounds too freaking crazy, but it is true. I forget about it often. There was a kid who came in at the beginning of the school year, my senior year in high school. He was seated directly behind me, regular looking kid, blue eyes, curly blonde hair, but he was new. I asked to be moved. He was sitting behind me muttering about how he was going to do something gruesome with a person involving a hatchet and a wood chipper. He said no one would ever find this person. Gulp. I thought it was me. So I went to the teacher, whose desk was right next to his, and diagonal to me, I asked to be moved. My teacher asked me if I could try to stay there for a few weeks. He said that he would deal with it, but that I was the only person whom he believed could sit near this boy. I agreed, because I was 16 and naive, I also knew my teacher was correct, and as a typical teen, I said nothing to my parents until after his father was arrested for ending his mother. A few weeks later, he disappeared from class. As it turned out later, his father had ended his mother with a hatchet. She had disappeared did all those gruesome things as his four-year-old son watched. His dad had applied for and been hired as the director of a state psychiatric facility. His arrest for murder made the papers. He was not even an admin or psychiatrist. The boy disappeared from school. Story 10. I went to a private school that was fairly new from grades 3 to 7, and each class was super small, so we all knew each other really well. Well, this one kid who had been there since first grade was actually crazy. In seventh grade, he would chase little girls. Grades kinder through probably fourth... It made everyone uncomfortable. This six foot two fat kid with a white fro chasing little kids. It was the epitome of a kid child predator. He also picked his nose all the time. Then when someone called him out or told him to stop, he would deny it and even start throwing a tantrum. Not only would he pick his nose, he would eat it too. That kind of behavior is unacceptable in any grade above first. Another thing he would do is fake fall to get attention. He would purposely fall and start crying to get attention in the seventh grade. He did this the entire time I was there from third grade to seventh. Not only was this just stupid, it was disturbing. The kid wore pants that were probably three sizes too big and wouldn't wear a belt even though he had one, so when he would fall and his pants would drop to his knees. It was a very disturbing experience. Sometimes he would even take his belt off during school because he didn't feel like wearing it. He would also sneak up behind people and try to give them hugs. It was creepy, and he wouldn't let go. He did this to a few of the female teachers a few times. He's homeschooled now. Dude, I'm thankful that kid was homeschooled. Probably saved dozens of kids getting creeped out. Story 11. Super long post. Worth the read, I promise. Some of these sound more like stories, but the person involved fits the thread too well. Enjoy. My high school had 2,500 plus students, predominantly white, and from a very wide range of economic backgrounds. So, here's a list. One kid dressed up as Santa and passed out CDs of a song that him and another student made about the teacher in order to stall for time so that we wouldn't take the final. Before winter break. Michael Jackson kid wore a sequin glove every day and would randomly yell, He! or Simone! He was in choir and during their final performance in front of the whole school, he broke away and started dancing a very good immigration MJ dance. He also loved dressing up as the school mascot so much that he became a furry. Wonderful guy. One kid had a wheelie backpack and would sprint like his life depended on it to the lunch line every day. He would run all Naruto-like with his free arm back and hunched forward. Much shorter versions, a girl that was intentionally trying to endlessly gain weight by eating anything and everything. This kid came in on the first day of middle school and asked right as class started if there were any cameras in the rooms, and my teacher jokingly said yes. He lost his marbles and never came back. First day of high school, this kid intentionally threw up so that he could leave school. He also never came back. Turns out that he got a girl pregnant over the summer and ran away after that class. The absolute ultimate. 
There was a kid in my English class who was normal as all hell. White, average height, middle area GPA, and relatively quiet. He always carried a green thick clipboard that was able to be opened so that he could store papers in it. Now this English class was wild. I was in it because I told my teacher to, well, I wasn't allowed back in regular classes, so I was in this one. We had heavy alcoholics, stealers, and even one kid that told their teacher that he had a healthy breakfast of Xanax and Hennessy every morning. Lots of characters. So that regular kid with the openable clipboard was in this class too. He, like a few others in the class of, I'd say, mid-30s amount of kids, was again normal as can be. Except for what was in that binder. We had to do public speeches for a final and the teacher stressed us to make sure that we passed them because they were a fairly large amount of our grades. The topic was to be decided when you get on stage and you had to talk about the topics for three minutes. Well, normal kid could not get anywhere with what he was given and gave up about 30 seconds in. He said the topic wasn't something he was interested in, so my teacher goes, Well, what's something that you're interested in? At this point, me and a few others already know what's in that clipboard, so we immediately start joking about him doing a speech about it. Teacher hears us talking about it and goes, Okay, I'll pass you if you can make it three minutes off of what's in the clipboard. Normal kid freezes and stares right at the teacher and says, But I can't get in trouble for it, right? Teacher vows that he's safe no matter what and that he asked him to present so he's safe. Normal kid goes, Okay, I warned you. A hush immediately goes over the whole room. He wasn't going to actually do it, right? The overhead projector turns on, and the clipboard opens. Normal kid flips through a few pages of the clipboard's content and finds his most prime page. Then, with a huge slam, he puts down the paper for the overhead to project and the whole class can see. This, he says with a most malicious grin as the projector shows the page. It's my hand-drawn anamorph hardcore adult stuff portfolio. Extreme. There before the whole class was a Tony the Tiger looking drawn man with what was probably a dragon jemmy lodged into another Tony the Tiger looking guy as he bent forward to drink milk out of a dog bowl. This and much more throughout his easy 10 minute speech and the quality was fantastic. I'm not into that stuff, but man, he was an artist. Full color background and let's just say a very creative imagination. Needless to say, the class is dying laughing and my teacher is as pale as you could get. After the speech and all the laughs finally died out, there was a reflection of seriousness that I would have never guessed from this class where we just talked about how good he was as an artist and how to respect his work. My teacher handled it very well, actually, and normal kid passed. No one knows what he's doing now, but it's a safe bet that I wouldn't want to look too hard to find out. We all know what he'll become. An artist. If you know what I mean. Wink, wink. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you made it this far, I'm sure you'll also enjoy people who ran into the weird kid from school years later. How did they turn out? It's shocking what happened to the kid in story, too. See you on that video.